Okay, now that we have all the uh, technical difficulties taken care of, uh, we're going to start the meeting. And we're going to start with a couple of uh, general business uh, discussions we need to have. Uh, first, we're going to be uh, talking about using the current town handbook for the uh, for the employee benefits uh, as a guideline for our consultants to to use while we're uh, when they're figuring out the cost of uh, consolidation. Is there any discussion? Is there anything you want, anybody want to talk about, or should we just accept the fact that the any new employees that go to the town will be subject to the current town uh, handbook. Any discussion? Is there, does the handbook address the salaries and the benefits? benefits right. the we're going to talk about salaries. So we're going to talk about salaries in a separate thing, but this talks about benefits. Okay, so we're just talking benefits right. because Generally, whenever... No. We try to do all sorts of figures we need to right. to have some. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna vote first on the, accepting the current town of Lions handbook for employee benefits uh, to take care of that, and then after that's done, we'll discuss salary. What salaries we should use? So do I have so. All in favor of using the current town handbook? Yes. Say aye. Aye. John, did you have a question? Well, I just wondered, does anybody know what actually is in the current handbook? Well, the, uh, mm -hmm. as we discussed before, the big thing was uh, the health insurance. Any new employee going to the town of Lions after 2010, 2012, 2012, 2012 has a limit of uh, $5,000 paid for their health insurance. So that's all we're that's, talking about. That's the big thing. So, all in favor of the <coughs> handbook? We're using this as the baseline. Right. For, right. The for, for the consultants. Yeah. For the calculation. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nate? Yeah. All right. I'd like to go on record as abstaining. Okay. It's appropriate. Okay. Well, we have to come up with something for the consultants to use, so we have a uh, majority rule. So we will accept that. For salaries, we, should we use the current salaries for the, for the police and fire or whatever, and for the town of Lions? Highway Department for a guideline for the consultants to use in figuring expenses going forward for their figures. <clears throat> John, what do you think? What do you think we should use? The current figures? Yep. Or the town figures? The current town figures for for uh, for uh, light job classifications. What would you do with for wastewater treatment plant operator the, or license? The, the, the town doesn't have any, so we would probably we would use the current village uh, cost for that. Right now in the town, all the um, highway guys all make the same. Yes. How about the deputy? Makes a little more. So would their starting wage be the same as the town highway person? Or would it that, be less? That's what our recommendation work? is, is that if they're the same uh, classification, job classification, <coughs> you would use the same salaries for, for calculations. For calculations. Okay. Not a recommendation to the board. This is for cal yeah. calculations only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the handbook, there's no no numbers on the salaries in there at all. That's <coughs> just basically benefits and what you know 
every sort of benefit, kind of like a contract. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with new help that's going to be hired. Oh well, yes, it is. It is. Well, well, any anybody going over from the village to the town, in your recommendations, you're saying how many full time right. people you expect to have, and then combine how about you highway have department. Outside? Well, that has nothing. To, okay. Well, we're we're just talking for our figures. If they're going to use twelve as a figure of number of people in the highway department, we're going to use the current town salaries. For that basis, if we we're not concerned with if you're hiring somebody new next week, this is for the new for the combined. Okay. Okay. You need something for a basis. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what else you could do. Right, I don't. I, I don't either. So that's why we need something for a guideline. Well, it's the only fixed income that you can rely on is the, what they're doing now. Right. It's all speculation and what happens. Two years from now. Right. So that'd okay. be the most consistent and constant. All right. So all in favor of using the current salaries? Just, just, so just clarification. So the water treatment facility, police officers, uh, firemen, we're going to use the, those same salaries and as a base salary? Whatever for the village. If there's no light position in the town right now, my understanding is what, you, what you're right. proposing is that you would use the current village salary. If there's a light position as in MEOs or laborers, okay. then they would be the town figures. That would, is That's that what, what it sounded like to me. Yeah. Yeah. Is that going to go along with the clerical and administration also? If they're like, you know, if they're a clerk, is a clerk, but um, most of them are not the same job title, would you we say? We have salaries in the recommendation from the administration, mm -hmm. and I think we will probably use those salaries that were in the recommendation from the subcommittee for a guideline. So clarify for me the, uh, when you say salaries, because our people, I know, they have longevity. Uh, they have uh, night differential. Uh, are we talking base salary, or is it going to be the? For we're instance, going to use the current salaries. If they get a differential, we're going to use a differential for having night shift. If they're going to, if they have ten years, they get paid more for having ten years than two years. Then we're going to use the salaries for a ten year. We're going to use the. So we would salaries. add that on. Right. You're, you're talking about your stipends, longevity yeah. stipends. Yeah, not for they, instance. He's, he's, she's not talking about if they get an extra dollar fifty an hour because they've been there 30 years. There's an additional stipend, a longevity stipend she's talking right. about. Yeah. Well, I think we should use the current salary structure okay. for the guideline, okay. whatever it may be. For new titles. Titles that are currently in the town. Right. Yeah. So adding them all. Right. What they say is if it's overlapped the DPW, you're going with the town. And right. if it's not overlapped through the yeah. town, right. if they're going to use the existing ones now for right. figuring for your. And including stipends or whatever yeah. they would That's the only way you're going to get an accurate reading on right. what the savings or no savings will be. Right. Is if you use what's accurate right now. Right. So we're going to use whatever is current with the village, if there's, like John said, if there's no overlapping town position. We're using the current village as a guideline. In total. In total. In total. In total. Well, it depends on what comes back from the public safety committee. If they're gonna, we have to find what they say, but that's the guideline in total. For a full time position, we're going to use the full time salary. For part time positions, we'll use part time salaries as they currently are, exist. For but I guess what I mean by in total is with stipends, with longevity, right. all of that, you know, all, with, not, well, not, not the benefits, not yeah, right. but, okay. but uh, in total in terms of, you know, add-ins, I guess, or if there are salaries. Salary, well, we're, so just, we're just costs. talking salaries. Okay. No benefits. The benefits are taken care of because of the handbook, town handbook. How does that work with longevity? Because the town doesn't have longevity. <coughs> They get fifteen hundred dollars. Say they get two thousand eighty a year, mm -hmm. and there's forty. That's forty hours a week. Then they get 
going to be you know, a dollar an hour more. And that gets recouped into their overtime, it gets recouped into their vacation, everything. So, I guess I, my question would be, if you're going to include these figures in the salaries, I would like to, the figures should be the total cost that it's costing the village, correct? Well, the, it will. Okay. Are you talking about just salaries? Yeah, salary, about salaries, money. salaries with with the longevity. Right, the right. That's, that's where we're using. Yeah. Now, of course, if you're coming down with your recommendations, we haven't seen what your recommendations are for the public, uh, for the uh, high, uh, for the police department. You know, but part time or part time, full time or full time, that's what we use for commercial figures. So what I have in my notes is where longevity exists and stipends are paid, salaries will be considered in total unless otherwise specified yes. by the subcommittee's recommendation? Yes, very good. Okay. We said it exactly the way I meant. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I question the longevity. The town doesn't have longevity. We're probably not going to, I can't let y'all say this. I can't speak for the board. I wouldn't assume that we would do longevity as a town. It's not, not, it's not as good. Yeah. Well, um, this was for bigger purposes. Yeah. This is the village guys get longevity, then you have to put it into their yeah, into the figures. We want to just have right. some of the calculations. Obviously, okay. everything that we're doing, and we've said it many times, doesn't mean anything because the town can do whatever they want. They the final, you know, final, they have the final word. So, but we need something for our report that we hope will be mm -hmm. somewhat accurate. And we need to have some baseline. So, all in favor of what Diane just read? <laughs> Aye. 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 All right. Opposed? I, no. Right. no, I'm not opposed. All right. I just wanted to, going back to the first resolution, which I voted no on, it, is there any possibility within, um, in, I know we have to have something for figures, so what we're using for figures is the, the town benefit handbook. Right. Is there any way that um, it can be looked at the word new, new employee, because our people, some have longevity of 20 years. So if they're going over to, to the town and they're starting as a new employee, it, would it not be fair to pay hospitalization at the same rate that their um, town people? Well, there, there's many ways to look at this. One way is to look at it is the village could dissolve and they would have no job whatsoever and they'd have to go look in someplace else. The other way to look at it is the town's offering them a position. This is what we pay. And if you want it, come to work for us if you're offered the position. If you think you can do better someplace else, go someplace else. That's the way the real world works. Not everybody works for municipality. I know that private industry doesn't work that way. So you can work for Kodak and retire and all of a sudden all your benefits are gone. This is the real world and we have to work with real world figures. I'm, aware I'm, you know, I'm sure there will be people that are disappointed if that's the way it works out. But just of remember, course, these, these employees are, are also village taxpayers, town taxpayers. I understand and that. They, they should be given the same chance as every other employee well, working for the, for the town. And all I'm asking is a, for a determination of new. All right. That's all I want. I think that a new employee, I'm, for our recommendation, a new employee for the town of Lyons is anyone hired after January 1st, 2012. Is that what it says in the handbook? Yes. Well, if we're, if we're going to go with the baseline, we really don't have a choice. That doesn't mean it's the final figure, but you either got to go one way or the other. We can't, we can't pick and choose what we want. That's just my opinion. Right. We've got to stick to what it is at this point. And I think that legally, if they hire somebody next week and they're only going to be paid 5000 toward their benefits, and two years from now, the village dissolves, the person that's hired next week 
shouldn't be paid lesser benefits than any other employee. So that's our that's our guideline. <coughs> um, we voted on it. It's accepted. And the town would do what they feel they can do if and when the village dissolves. The second thing we're going to bring up is a uh, date or a dissolution date. Now, this is something that surprised me a little bit when we got talking about all that's going into the time frame of the dissolution. I'm going to ask the consultants to put it on our web page, that little diagram you had about when things are done. After we're all done and we've turned everything over to the consultants, they work off all their figures and we give it to the village and the village says okay. It has to be published for four weeks in a row in a on the internet and also in a publication. So that takes us a month out. So if we get done, you know, we're in the middle of June now, if by the time we get everything to the village board to look at with our final figures, if they look at it and say okay and we're talking maybe a month from now, so that's the middle of July, Four weeks from that would take us into uh, middle of August. And then the village has to set up a public hearing. And that's 35 to 90 days after we make the presentation, original presentation to them. At the public hearing, if there are a lot of dissent or questions about what the subcommittees came up with, the village board can ask us to come up with amendments to our basic plan. So that means if we come up with amendments, things have to be published again for another four weeks. And then there's another public hearing. And if it's, everything goes well from that, then they have 45 days for the voters to come up with a petition to uh, ask for a new vote. So we're looking into December by now. <clears throat> so after that, if there's enough signatures, there's 60 to 90 days to re-vote. So if we're looking, we're looking at February. So it might be February or March of 2014 if there's a re-vote on, uh, on our recommendations and the dissolution before we know if we're going to dissolve. So then after that's done, it goes to the village and town to actually do the dissolution process which it took Seneca Falls a year and a half to do. So we're looking to hopefully get done with everything by May 31st of 2015 for the dissolution date. Because that would give, if the vote is in February of 2014, that means we have March, April, May, and a year, so there would be 15 months for the town and village to get everything done. One of the reasons to have it on May 31st is for the simplicity of closing the books at the end of the year for the village <coughs> controller so that everything can be done on a final date instead of trying to do it mid-year mid-budget. So, 
if enough signatures aren't gathered, so there has to be a revote, then we're moving everything back, you know, until October. So that gives them a year and a half to still do it. So regardless, I'm proposing that May 31st, 2015 be the dissolution date for Village of Lions if the dissolution continues on path. Any questions or any questions? All right. And then Diane and I can uh, answer this. If, it, if the dissolution date's May 31st, so from June 1st until the end of December, how does the town provide service with no money? Budget for in, in your 2015 budget. And that's a question as far as 2015. Uh, okay. You might want to ask the controller. Um, they will definitely have the guy come through on, on the... Yeah, they would have to budget. When you do your budget at the end of 2014, mm -hmm. You would have to budget a half a year for the cost so by combined, okay. your combined okay. services for mm -hmm. for the latter six months of the 2015 budget year. So it's easier for the builders to to cycle out at the end of their budget season. Have to, and easier actually for the town because then you're going to okay. have a clean to be able to do that audit for one full year. And Mayor, you, you would that would be a good question for the controller as well. Is how do you do your tax levy? How does that work for, um, you know, you're going to have that last year, mm -hmm. you will have collected the taxes the year before. So is there a tax or does the town, you know, is there a half year tax? Or, um, ours was December 31st by law and it created a tremendous amount of problems for and the village yeah. folks and for the town to finally get the closure to it. So that would be a great question. You're going to meet with them. We're meeting with them Thursday, right? Yeah. Thursday. Okay, so do we have a vote on the dissolution date? I move. Okay. It's 8 31st, 2015. Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> that carries. Okay, the administrative uh, subcommittee. You're meeting with the Office of the Controller next um, Thursday. Thursday. And what's the purpose of your meeting so that everyone is going to go? Well, we have several questions, questions that uh, we really can't answer. And, you know, we're, we're involved with three funds. We have waters, the sewer, and the general fund. And how they uh, will interrelate as far as uh, police wages and things of that so type. We have um, well, one thing here is like, how is the tax cap going to affect us? Yeah, tax so cap. Where are we going to come up with that number for the two percent? Mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding that the controller's office will actually work with you for a, it's going to be a year one. It's, it's really considered a new, uh, new municipality because it's newly combined. Mm -hmm. So they will actually work with you to provide a year. A year one as far as they're concerned is tax. Yeah. Uh, it, because that uh, has a oh, huge, well, well, that has a huge yeah. background. Who we hire, what we can hire, how much we can pay, how many employees we can have. Yeah. I mean, that, that's going to dictate everything. Yeah. That number. Yeah, that definitely. And you're going to have an odd big question. 2015 budget is not going to be a normal for you because you're going to have six months and six months. So, controller might be able to answer that. It may even be a waiver for you two years, the rest of 2015, and then your first full year as a new entity. Yeah, yeah it's gonna, probably going to be their first instance where uh, where your budget year, where, where you're going to have to deal with this mid-budget year during the tax cap, you're probably the very first uh, municipality that is asking this question. So they won't have any answers then, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the... the <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they're going to have to work with you to come up with a figure is probably the answer that they're going to give you. <coughs> See, we have questions. Uh, we have uh, probably six or seven reserve funds. Uh, how do we treat them? Do, uh, can they be turned over to the town 
is a reserve fund for police car or for fire truck or whatever? Uh, or what do we have to do? How do we do it? And we not only have um, reserve funds for general fund, we also have reserve of water and uh, small amounts of water. <coughs> and uh, we're starting to with uh, the sewer funds. <coughs> we're really not sure how, how those are going to be treated. Uh, we're looking at insurance. Uh, Brian and I have uh, talked with uh, nine insurance companies in to find out uh, cost, mm -hmm. liability, uh, is, is there additional uh, cost, is it going to be less, we don't know. So those are things that uh, we're looking into. Uh, uh, and I know Brian has made several mm -hmm. uh, inquiries as far as workers' compensation and also the uh, street lighting districts. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Uh, so many of these things that you know they're, they're regulated by the controller about the law, financial law of the state of New York. So you can't just say, "Well, you're going to do this." You, you have to have to do it legally. So well, we can um, we can probably suggest a couple of questions as well. Good, good. Anybody that has that questions, please um, yeah. Yeah, give us a list and we'll. For instance, submit them to for instance like filing an AED at prison mm -hmm. for that fiscal year. You know, it's mm -hmm. impossible to file after the books have been closed because you won't exist to close the books or to, or to actually file the AED. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility for preparation um, for an audit for filing an AED, um, those kinds of questions, and I think I need to be real interested in um, you know how that responsibility falls on the shoulders of the last town. pay period. Mm -hmm. We had to do. We had to pay out the last pay period prior to December 31st because we legally didn't exist to sign a paycheck. Right. Yeah. You know, think we worked right up until, you know, the, the last minute of that pay period, but you have to project. Yeah. Or at least that's that's the best answer that we could come our up lawyer, with because we did it short because you know in the absence of answers from the state, we're hoping that at this point they've had time to formulate some answers mm -hmm. uh, about uh, their preference for how it's done. Okay, so you can report back to us next Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, the other questions we had. Did it, was someone looking into the town clerk and whether they can accept the water and sewer bill? I, I did not do that. All right. Well, was it supposed to? I might have forgot that. Right. Well, I thought you were going to mm -hmm. talk to Michelle. I talked to her about a lot of things, but I don't think I talked to about that. And how about the highway superintendent? Can he, uh, uh, can he be assigned additional duties like the water and sewer plant? Um, and he's an elected official. Okay. He has, he has. He can, he can be. The town board feels fit that would fall under a high risk of Okay, that, that's in the same book. All right. So I'm not sure about that, but I would say 90% sure yes, but. Yeah. And I guess, you know, part two of the same question is uh, would there necessarily be additional compensation associated with that? And if so, um, you know, we need our marching orders in terms of uh, uh, what that compensation should be. How it should be factored into the calculation. Uh, that additional compensation. <clears throat> how do you? I mean, I'm sure that I'm sure the town highway superintendent has a figure. It might not agree with the town figure. <coughs> I mean, well, get his figure and then or the town figure. Yeah. Well, I think we have to kind of wait and see. What well, you have you first. have your uh, recommendations from the subcommittee today, right? Mm -hmm. Did you, was that a consideration? <laughs> Although, I mean, I talked to Jake, you know, he's looking for more money. Oh, of course. He's going to have more responsibility yeah. and more people, so you expect that. Yeah. So, did you uh, have a chance? We, we were talking about, we were talking about districts. Uh, we have already have water districts. We have a couple of separate lighting districts. <coughs> One of the questions was, what are we going to do about the village lighting situation? 
Are we going to keep that as a separate writing district within the village? Or will that become a part of the general fund of the uh, general budget of the uh, town? And Ryan, you said you talked to some uh, yeah, I talked to supervisors three other, and similar situations. Three other supervisors on lighting districts and water and sewer districts. Um, two of the three, the third one being the town of Marion, as far as the water districts go, the town of Marion has seven, seven separate water districts. That's because they've all been created in, in, in the last 20 or so years. So there's different grants, and mm -hmm. she recommended leaving them separate. The other two supervisors recommended if you can combine a water district, combine it because it's a whole lot easier for everybody. As far as the lighting districts goes, unless there's a specialty in a, in a certain area of a lighting district, combine combine them if you can. Because no reason why not. We're going to combine them with the sidewalks and talk. The sidewalks, the sidewalks, 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 sidewalks. Yeah. Well, so the lighting district would. Alloway, Gristmill, and the Village of the Lions would be a part of a total town that would go into the town budget as, as a town lighting district. As a town lighting district. Yes. So there would not be a separate charge to the people who live in the village now. So it would just be an appropriation, right? So <coughs> You're going to have a separate district to include Alloway, Grist Mill, and former village residents in that lighting district, and those costs will be just figured within, uh, within the lighting district. Within the lighting okay. district. So, so yeah. only the people who, who get the street lighting pay for it, or everybody pays for it in the village? Is, hmm. is the town <coughs> appropriation? Their recommendation to me was create one lighting district so whoever has lights pays for the use of the lights. So there would be a village district. Well, no. no. It would all be in one town town lighting district. People who have lighting versus people who don't have lighting. So everybody in the township no. light no. down. Anybody that has anybody that has lights. LOA right now has a lighting district. <coughs> Bristol has a lighting district. The village alliance has a they would all become one lighting district. Those people would still just, only those people would pay for the lights. No, only the village people in the village lighting district would pay for the hundred and no. something. No. 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 Well, yes, yes. yes. No. No, you, you're using the word district, and district to me means that only a certain group pay yes. for the service, which is uh, village people have street lights. Right. Therefore, only village people will pay. There will be a district. Only village people will pay for that hundred thousand yeah, plus. That's in there. That is that correct? Right, yes. Okay, that's what I did. And I then saying, the people in Alloway would still be paying. And they would pay for their. And the people no, 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 no. Let me let me try to explain this. All right, simple. Uh, well, Alloway, the village, and Grisman is going to get a bill. Okay? That bill is going to be paid by one district, the town. Mm -hmm. Not right? Not, well, uh, one bill, one, I mean, it, is it going to be broken up? Why should no. we pay for no. Alloway? What, can, I, can I take a shot at this? They yeah. don't want to yeah. pay for the bill. <laughs> I thought it's one district, it's just going to be one bill. What? <laughs> and I think that this is. Um, we're used to districts being contiguous areas. Mm -hmm. And what I heard Brian say is the difference would be where where typically what we would see is the former village residents would be one district, Grishnall would be another district. Mm -hmm. His, he's saying that the recommendation is to take those special districts, combine them into one special district. So it would be people who get lighting would be the lighting district, even though they're in, in non-contiguous areas. So they would all be considered the lighting district versus people who live in a rural area with no lights would be would not be charged. So it's a so separate only the people who receive it lighting on your tax bill. It's a, would be a separate, separate district charge for okay people who receive it, but it's not just village. It would be village plus grist mill would also be included plus and Alloway. Alloway would well, also be included. That's basically what I'm. That's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But I think saying the same thing. Everybody's saying the same thing. I said the same thing, only a totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what Joe said. 
That's the recommendation that they gave me. Um, I that would be my recommendation to this committee, but that often um, the often has to come from the town board, of course. And, and if it would be or would not be a district. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for the town board, but that was a recommendation. Well, in the same way that the you know the, the calculation figures were established yeah. earlier, it's for the sake of the calculations and a recommendation for the sake of the calculations. Right. So it is a separate trip. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I'm getting with yeah. that. Is it a separate line item? Mm -hmm. So, do you, you want to do this separately? Let's do each individual one separately and vote on it, and then we hopefully will know what we're talking about. Sergey, so can I interject here? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about this lighting district as being a line item to the town. We're talking about it as being a tax, tax bill right. to people who get lights. Right. And not a tax bill to people that don't get lights. Right. Right. So it's a line item. Is it well, is a line, line item, item on the tax bill. Right. It's not a line item on the tax bill. No, no, it's not on the tax bill. Okay. So, what are your true costs to the lighting district? Yeah. What if we did not have a district? And everybody in the township would town. Then it would go to the general budget and it would be distributed. Everybody in the town would pay their. And how much would that affect cost per person? Oh, it's a hundred thousand for the village now. I'm not sure how much the grist mill. Say, say ten thousand for the both of them. So I'd say hundred and ten. Right. So then everybody pays. If you didn't do it that way, it was, uh, is that an option? No. It's an yeah, option. It's an option. Yeah. What's the total assessed value of the town and building? A little bit more than fifty some million, right? Ninety-four million years ago. Seventy-seven, hundred and sixty. All right. So, one hundred and ten thousand dollars is not a huge amount per thousand if you want to do it that way. Yeah. So, what are the thousand? About a buck a thousand? No, I said ninety-seven. So what's the feeling of the committee? Do you want to keep a separate, you want to keep a separate district, and the user fee, basically a user fee, like it is now, or do you want to have it as a general town budget item, where all the people in the township pay for the lights? Is there any? You live out in the town. Yes. And did I hear you say last week say that you had a street light and you were built by NYSEG for it? No. Okay. People who do live in the town do have the option of paying separately for a street light. Mm -hmm. What do you think the acceptance would be of the general town residents being having a line item on the town budget paying for lighting? If they yeah, the want a light, they have to pay NYSEG. I think mm -hmm. that would reduce their acceptance. I mean, isn't that why districts and separate districts were set up because the users got the benefit of the lights? Mm -hmm. right. I'm just using that as an illustration no. to yes. support well, that's why it. you want to have a district. Right. I'm just bringing it up for conversation. That's why we're mm -hmm. debating it. I feel the same way you do. I think that it's a user's fee, and <coughs> if you get the benefit of the lights, you pay. If you don't get the benefit of the lights, then you don't pay. That's why we're opinion. a village. Because right. we wanted that separate right. service and we're willing to pay for it. All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad you just said show. that. Okay. So. <laughs> I, know I know what you're saying, but, but why, why do we dissolve that? Right. Well, we're that's, pay for that this has service. nothing to do with what our right. conversation. We're, this is a dissolution committee, and we're trying to come up with the best way to do things for dissolution. So. I'm going to put forward that the lighting district will stay in force and it will be a separate district tax for the taxpayers in the district to pay as a line item and not as a general bill for the whole township to pay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. All right.
passes. If I could, and I don't know who the appropriate entity would be to make this inquiry, but you will find that your street lighting is multi-layered in the way of contracts with the utility. I think that there's, that somewhere along the line, the committee would be doing a justice to this creative district by making inquiry as to what NYSEG's position would be on the multi-layers of contract. So in other words, there's different contracts for different... An example, like the downtown, those lines are being billed at a different rate than the lights that are, say, on the Route 14 bridge. And the ones on the Route 14 bridge may be 20 years into their life expectancy depreciation, where the ones downtown have no life depreciation schedule because they're owned by the town. What's going on out in Gristmill or Alloway is another mystery. Well, it depends if it's on a telephone pole or not. It depends if the village owns it or the town owns it. There's all different rates. It's a fixture itself. That's irrelevant. You know what the districts are. It's not irrelevant. You got the Gristmill pays a rate right now, and it's going to stay the same rate. You have the village area, they pay the same rate. It's not going to change. They're still going to be owned by the town. It's going to be all owned by the town. What would be the difference? There's a huge difference. There's a huge difference in who may, who's paying. Now, all right, Mr. Town Supervisor, would you like to get a bill to your DPW for fixing all the lights downtown? Because NYSEG won't fix them for you. And at the end of the depreciation schedule of the lights on the bridge, they won't fix them anymore either. But they may be interested in negotiating with the lighting district to put new lights up at a new rate. And I just think that if you're creating a district, we've been very particular about discussions in the subcommittee as to what the implications are of a fire district. I think you have to be equally aware of what the implications are of any district you create, whether it's a lighting district, a sidewalk district, a flower maintenance district. You have to know what potentially costs you're opening yourself up to. I think it's just a case of having some disclosure from the utility to the people that will be accepting the bill on this lighting district. Right now, do you negotiate with NYSEG for your lighting? So you sign contracts with NYSEG? When they're installed, yes. We have a contract. And the contract lasts 20 years? I'm not sure. They may be different. Okay. Can I just interject? For the sake of the cost calculations that we're going to be, the number of countries that we're going to be doing, what we would do is, there would be disclosure in terms of that district cost. It's actually part of the calculations because that's only fair. Something's going to be shifted from a tax bill to a district bill. It's still a tax bill. But from a general fund or a general expense to a district expense, what we would do is we would look at the existing costs. So using your example, the maintenance, for instance, of the downtown lights, represented in the village budget as a maintenance expense, a DPW maintenance expense. Town lighting, the bridge lighting would be a utility expense in the town budget. We'll be taking those costs out because it would no longer be a general fund expense but rather a district expense, and then we would reflect those costs. We can only use the existing, the current budget to draw those figures from, but it would be reflected as a, you know, going forward, projected as a district expense, and it would be pulled out, and actually there would be an expense there projected. So if you were thinking that it was just going to disappear, it's not going to disappear. It will be reflected as a district expense. I'm just suggesting that upon recommendation of this district, the lighting district, that there be some disclosure as opposed to just saying, okay, Chris Mill's paying $5,000 a year, and Alloy's paying $5,000 a year, and the village is paying $100,000 a year, so everybody that gets lights now is going to be splitting up $110,000 in time margins now. There's other potential expenses. I think there should be at least 
disclosure. I, I would think, I mean, I don't want to drag this out forever. If we went to a legend district, I wouldn't just work with a common term, one of myself and another board member, to sit down with, with, uh, with nice the mayor and the nice <coughs> see what contracts the village has on hand, bring them to the table, mm -hmm. say, look, the village is going to dissolve, we need to move forward to stop this out. Well, NYSEC nice has municipal service representatives that would be more than happy to meet with them. I think that you should mm -hmm. take advantage of this somewhere well, along the line. But that's, that's, that's not something we're going to. We can put that into the recommendation that they do that, but for current expenses, I think that we don't, we're trying to get this done as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not looking yeah. to delay it. I'm yeah. just thinking that we should be on record that yeah. we recognize yeah. that this yeah. is a consideration. Well, I guess what I would yeah. suggest is it strikes me that yeah. it strikes me that Nice Ed might come back with um, the points you've raised are, are valid points, but really the, the kernel of the argument might be that there would be some difference of opinion, just potential difference of opinion in terms of the, the benefit of downtown lights, whether the folks who live in Gristmill and Ellaway should bear the additional expense for downtown lights and whether that truly benefits them if, because that's the great the bulk of the expense um, as opposed to someone who lives you know, a half mile down the road outside of that district. What's the difference in terms of the benefit of the downtown lights? So, so one consideration might be that there are two separate districts, that there is the downtown lights be considered a separate district from the others. Perhaps the, the supervisors that you spoke with didn't actually have a downtown a downtown area, so maybe they really have never had to make that consideration before. They have so, they have downtowns, but not the side of the road. Mm -hmm. So I think you know really what it comes down to, especially um, you know this really brings it to light. When you're talking about districts and benefiting users, you end up having to decide what is the benefit, and therefore you know are, are there distinctly benefiting users that uh, when it comes to downtown lighting, someone might argue that, that that's a community-wide benefit. I'm not making a recommendation either way. I'm just saying these are the considerations. And I think if you did ask my site, they'd probably say that's the real kernel of the argument or the real kernel of the consideration is who are the real benefiting users of the downtown lights and would Grist Mill and Alloway folks who are going to bear the, the brunt of the expense in addition to, you know, why should their district fees go up, specifically them and not everyone else? That's, you know, it's an equity issue and, you know, defined by, uh, you know, who you think the benefiting users truly are. So, does that, does that make sense? Sorry, that, no. that, you know, that didn't simplify it, unfortunately. Yeah, but none of, none of this is a simple matter. So, do we have Obviously, the person listening Yes, we did. All right, so the, the Vote was. I just want to make sure. Okay, the vote know. says that we will have the districts will be called right. district. One district. One district. And that the uh, user, it's a user fee, will, which will be reflected on the line item on the user's tax bill. So all of the maintenance and the electrical costs to NYSEC, all of the costs for the village, Alloway, and Gristmill will be put into one taxing piece, is that what you're saying? It's going to be one <coughs> district charge yeah, for all one three district areas? District. That's what you're, it's going to be one district with one charge, Brian, per? So just a thought, the people in those districts, Alloway and so forth, are going to, uh, what, eight or ten thousand dollars? They're going to have added on top of that hundred and they're going to pay yes, they are. through the nose. If, if you're combining, if you're going to have one lighting district equal with all of the, <coughs> the assessments. That's the point I was trying to make. That yes. when you go yeah, to do the math. Oh, should we keep three separate we'll districts? Them. Keep it three for now. But, right, we're going to keep, keep it three separate <coughs> districts just until we do a cost analysis. Okay. Why can't you have like one district with three bills? Alloway bill with three districts. Well, well, different, different and that's three districts. Yeah, three districts. Okay. Yeah, yeah three districts are getting different. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So we have three different districts. Okay. 
to a motion to rescind that former yeah. right. <coughs> I, mean, I just I'd have to see the cost analysis of what it actually cost a village residence versus those two what two two lighting district residents. Well, because if if you take a hundred thousand dollars, I, I don't want to make this any longer, but we're talking about it. if you take a hundred thousand dollars, you got a hundred thousand residents. That's a buck per resident. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you got ten thousand out there, you got ten thousand residents, a dollar per resident. So you know the true cost. You don't know which way really to go. But we, yeah. well, this is just a recommendation take for now. Take hundred thousand divided by ninety-four million. Uh, that's, that's our case to go with so much. And, you, and they'll give you a ballpark. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep the three districts right. for now for our recommendation. You know, right. and everything that we re recommend is mm -hmm. up for change when more information is. Uh, and you can, you're not going to be doing it. I mean, all the committees are not going to be voting on every subcommittee. So if you this week want to take a look and discuss it again, you can put it back on the table. Next we'll just, week. No, let's table for now. Let's just table for now. That way you're not rushed and you can figure out what you, what all of you want to do. All right. I think you might want to take, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I think you might want to take into consideration a couple different options. One of them being, um, you know, that the existing lighting districts, uh, you know, recognize this districts, um, the downtown lighting, whether it be a, uh, an expense to former village residents or whether um, there's a, a general belief that the downtown lights benefit everyone and therefore that should be a time wide. Those are your options for consideration. So you might want to look at the fiscal implications of uh, both. And just go down it again next week. Right. Okay, so we'll resend it. All right, we're resending the vote. We'll talk about it next week. Okay, so Corinne, can you break down the cost of the lighting district? Yeah, sure. All right. And you can do it for the town. All right. Okay. Village and Town Public Works Committee. All right, we're moving on. Jim uh, Pacello, Jim Brady. Okay. Village and Town Public Works Committee. I'd like to just uh, take this opportunity to not only thank Jim, thank Robin for typing this up several, several times. <laughs> okay. Uh, this report will address the needs of public works. Our recommendation is basically leaving the Public Works Department unchanged other than obvious merge uh, of village and town employees' responsibilities. There should be 11 full-time employees. This includes one mechanic, one foreman for the water and sewer, and one for the street and highway. <clears throat> the numbers are based on the needs and, uh, uh, the need and experience. Changes in delivery of service will include, but not are limited, the village and town employees will merge responsibilities, creating a more efficient workforce, thus saving money and time. At this time, there is no opportunity to eliminate layers. Going forward, it is our opinion the town handbook will be followed. Salary and benefits assumption will be addressed with the whole committee. It is this subcommittee's recommendation that the salaries will remain the same through the uh, transition is complete. At that time, the town will hire full-time employees in accordance with the town handbook. Uh, the benefits will be as stated in the town handbook. Uh, the result is substantial savings. Our recommendations are based in part through interviews with extensive research with Mike Salerno and Jake M. All equipment currently in use will <coughs> remain uh, eliminating duplication as deemed necessary. The equipment will then be sold and monies will be used to purchase other items as needed. The equipment reserve budget in the new entity <coughs> will remain the same. It will be the responsibility of village slash town employees to update or acquire licenses and certifications. Contractual service for cemetery maintenance would still be required. 
summer labor would continue to full-time laborers at 750 an hour uh, on or about the third or fourth week in June until September 1st. Assisting with park work, maintenance, water plants, and weaving. Striping by the county will continue without <clears throat> change. Uh, bi weekly, $6,662 and $8,000. By yearly. By yearly, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Cost for contractual service at $35,000 a year will remain unchanged, uh, including youth agencies. No changes in shared service such as building financial arrangements or public works funds. The Highway Subcommittee has reviewed both town and village highway operations. Although each department is a highway related, the village has other items different than the town highway department. Example, maintenance of parks, brush pickup, water main breaks, canal trail maintenance. Both village and town critical services are similar. Road maintenance year round, snow removal, road and sidewalks. Seasonal storm cleanup, emergency service may include but not limited to trees and brush removal and pickup. Flooding and blizzard hazards. Village highway total budget is $1,103,000. This includes all benefits such as Social Security, Workman's Comp, New York State Retirement, medical insurance and unemployment insurance. The total village highway revenue, which comes from the state-funded CHIPS Consolidated Highway Improvement Program, amounts to $79,659 per year. However, there is a $238,971 in the revenue account. This is a three-year accumulation and should be spent on road repairs. <coughs> Attached, you will find a complete breakdown of the services. Total highway budget is $1.158 million. This is the town. This includes all benefits as shown in the village breakdown. <clears throat> there are a few things in the town highway budget that is not related to highway, but it's in the budget, such as $65,000 for maintenance of the joint landfill, Cale Lines Landfill, and $53,000 maintenance of cemeteries. Revenues include CHIPS money from the state, which the town receives at uh, $135,000 a year. The best we could do the town budget breakdown is as follows. 45% snow removal, that's determined by the weather. 5% shop time and repairs, cleaning equipment. 30% road construction and helping other towns. 20% of the time overall maintenance mowing, ditching, culvert replacement, cutting shoulders. Canal project. <clears throat> Canal project is done with in-kind services, which means equipment and fuel are free, labor is reimbursed. Upon dissolution, village and town employees must learn each other's jobs to ensure continuity in the workforce, as well as procure the appropriate licensings to operate all machinery. Each employee will be expected to be able to operate the different types of equipment, function that relate to water main breaks, etc. Village and town equipment should be assessed on where it can be used most efficiently. For example, do we need more than one payloader when do we need two payloaders at the same time? Snow removal might be able to just use one. Duplication of equipment can be better determined after the merge. We should look at all services for duplication. This is extremely important. One important improvement <clears throat> will be working as one unit. For example, when the town plows go out, the village plows go out. <coughs> one person makes the call for both village and town. At this time, town trucks will put their plows down while leaving the shop and plow the village streets on the way to the town limits. Parks, lawns, flowers, and roadside <clears throat> would be a concentrated effort eliminating the need for part-time seasons. These are a few suggestions to reduce costs. <clears throat> Split shifts for winter, reducing overtime. Consider contracting out park maintenance as well. As it was stated, a full-time person is 
unable to properly maintain them weekly or purchase more efficient equipment. Alternatives consolidate both highway departments through an intermunicipal inter agreement. This, cons this committee sees substantial savings in the transition to town in the form of benefit reduction. And there's a copy. How do you stand for the number of employees now compared to what you're recommending? You, you have 11 now and you're recommending to keep it at 11? Yeah, because, you know, the, at this time, that's, that's what we're doing. Okay. The, only, only the, there's, there's, uh, it's, it's hard to tell where the duplication of service is going to be after the merge. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to need the sewer and the water guys. Right. That's a must. And, uh, now the, as far as, uh, contracting out more, more of the cemeteries, is that what you're... No, we were thinking about the parks. Oh, the parks? Yeah. yeah we did some bids already to put people, people in there. Pretty aggressive. I mean, it's really something to look at. Okay. With that, that might, it might uh, use less, one less employee. Right. Or would you need less summer help? Summer help. Because yeah. currently you have... It might be cheaper. You, you have part-time people doing the winter too, right? I don't think so. We don't. No. We, 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 well, have, we have one plow guy. I think mm -hmm. Yeah, and somebody's out with a part time. Yeah. Oh, you already have substitutes. Yes. Oh, okay. But I saw the Ryan Lake and a couple other yeah. people were there. Yeah. <coughs> they're listed as part timers. I didn't know how that worked. So they only come in if there's a full time person that's not available. Yeah, we have a high demand trainer that's out. Yeah. He's been out for quite some time. Oh, okay. So they were only filling in for some time. All right. Do um, we have any parks still for anything really here? Well, one thing I see in the budget here it says on the second page under the town highway budget it's worth 1.158 million. Not that high. Um, it may, I don't know what the numbers for that, but the 65,000 for the landfill and the 53,000 for the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. That's in general. That's not a highway number. Okay. So we subtract that out from um, 1.15 million. If that's in there, yeah. Yeah, because I just looked them up. Or they're both in general fund that highway. Okay. Well, we'll be doing the we'll, we'll be okay. doing the budget. Yeah, right. we'll be doing the budget crosswalk, so we'll be able to clarify. Uh, okay. The, That's what it said. I thought it was under the highway. Yeah. Okay. So right now the two budgets are about 2.3 million. Two point two. All right, so it's two point two million, and you state this going to be the same going forward. Budget figures of say approximately same. Did that get the engineers will tell us? Well, we'll be taking that budget process. We'll be taking those figures, you know, the budget figures to start with. Yeah. Where you know what they are now, and then projecting um, based on your recommendations what costs are going to look like. Um, are there any other questions, comments about their uh, subcommittee's recommendations? Yeah. Okay. What we're going to do is table this until next week, June twentieth. We'll vote to accept the uh, subcommittee's recommendations. Can you get a copy to Thea? She's at the school. <coughs> well, actually, when we get uh, your other recommendation for the public's power, if you put both of them together, I'll take them to Thea tomorrow. Do you have a report? Yeah, please. Please, please, please. <coughs> so if you have Thea's on the report. Okay, if that's, uh, if that's all uh, taken care of, um, the Public Safety Committee is Brian, Chief Bogan, and Jim Brady. 
Who's going to be? Uh, Just take this time to change.